Back to that secretly recorded videotape of Governor Mitt Romney that's lighting up the Internet. The governor was speaking to donors at a private fundraiser back in May. Today, he is standing by the comments he made that 47% of Americans will not vote for him because they are dependent on the government and don't pay income taxes. Governor Romney also told the crowd that Palestinians are not interested in peace with Israel. And I don't think the Palestinians don't want to see peace anyway for political purposes. I committed to the destruction and elimination of Israel and these thorny issues, thorny issues, and I say there's just no way. And so what you do is you say you, you move things along the best way you can. You hope for some degree of stability, but you recognize this is going to remain an unsolved uh, problem. I mean, we, we live with that in, in China and Taiwan. All right, we have, we have a, a, a potentially... So is this a huge problem, a faux pas that's going to sink the Romney campaign, or could this tape actually help Mr. Romney with his base? Let's bring in a fair and balanced debate now. Kate Obenshane is the former chair of the Republican Party in Virginia and author of Divider in Chief. Simon Rosenberg is a former advisor to President Clinton and founder, founder of NDN. So Simon, what do you think? Has this really torpedoed, in your view, Mitt Romney's chances? No, I don't think it's. I don't think he's had a particularly good few weeks. I don't think this is a game-ending event because it's very consistent, frankly, with the arguments that he's been making uh, over the last several months. And I think if Republicans wanted a debate about the economy, we're going to have one. If the Republicans wanted a debate about foreign policy, we're going to have one. I guess my major point here is that I just felt what I was surprised by was how confusing what Mitt Romney said. I mean, there were tens of millions of Republicans included in that group of people who don't pay income taxes. And if you're a Republican senior in Boca Raton, or if you're a waitress in Toledo with three kids working single mom, right, and you're a Republican, the, you know, he insulted you today. He said you were a lazy uh, Democrat, right, who didn't deserve, uh, you know, the, you know, was an undeserved Democrat. I think, and, you know, that's what William Crystal wrote in his column today. So I think, you know, unfortunately for the Republicans, Mitt Romney's looked a little bit more like Mr. Magoo recently than he has a serious presidential candidate. Right. That's a good line. All right, Kate, I heard you laughing during his uh, characterization. You don't agree. Right. The notion that Mitt Romney called people in Boca Raton lazy is absurd. Basically, what the Democrats are going to do with this and what the Obama administration is going to do is just a continuation of their class warfare, divide and conquer rhetoric, where they say that Republicans are purely greedy, they care more about millionaires and billionaires than children with autism and Down syndrome. But in reality, what Mitt Romney said is no different than what Alexis de Tocqueville said when he said, when a majority of the American people become dependent on government's largesse, the democracy is in peril. And that's actually a very valid point. It's the essence of what conservatism believes, that dependence on government actually inhibits economic growth. It inhibits individual success and prosperity. And I think it's a debate and an argument that Mitt Romney wants to have. He clearly indicated that when he nominated um, Paul Ryan as his uh, vice presidential candidate. He said he was willing to take on the really tough issues that he knew the Demo Democrats would spin and try to, you know, create all these divisions and say successful people only got there at the expense of the poor. We want to talk about, I think what the Romney campaign really wants to do is focus on talking about an, an economy of opportunity, free markets, getting the government out of the way instead of this uh, welfare state that has expanded exponentially with food stamps, um, dependent disability, growth and disability payments. This is a conversation Romney wants to have. All right, because not everybody has been running to their computers to download <laughs> or play some of what Mitt Romney had to say, I, I want to play a clip of it here now. There are 47% of the people who are both for the president no matter what. All right, there are 47% who are with him, who are dependent upon government, who believe that, that they are victims. Government has a responsibility to care for them, who believe that they are entitled to health care, to food, to housing, to you name it. But that's it's an entitlement, and the government should give it to them. And they will vote for this president no matter what. Now, I want to compare and contrast that, if possible, with what candidate Obama said in 2008, also at a private event, when he was talking about uh, people who he was trying to uh, win the support of. Play this. And you remember some of these small towns in, in, in Pennsylvania. A lot of, like a lot of small towns in the Midwest. Yeah. Like the jobs have been gone now for 25 years and nothing's replaced them. And they've gone through the Clinton administration and the Bush administration. And each successive administration has said that somehow these 
communities are going to regenerate, and they have not. Well, it's not surprising then that they get better and they cling to guns or religion or uh, antipathy towards people who aren't like them, or anti-immigrant or you know, anti-trade sentiment. And it's a way to explain their frustrations. Comparing those two, Simon, I, I want you to take on this thought. This is from Chris Steyerwalt, who wrote this piece on foxnews.com today. He says, Obama's message, meaning the one we just heard from candidate Obama, was that he could show blue-collar voters that he was on their side with his message about tax increases and make them overcome their own racist or xenophobic tendencies. He could win them over with promises of government spending. Romney's message, however, was that he won't get the votes of the 47%, who pay no federal income taxes and isn't going to try. I wish we had this on screen. It would be a lot easier to understand. <laughs> While Obama was explaining yeah. his bid to woo voters and uh, woo voters opposed to him and favorable to Hillary Clinton, Romney was explaining why he was writing off a huge chunk of the electorate. In S. Dyerwalt is saying uh, that Mr. Obama was trying to explain why he could win over some Hillary Clinton voters. Mitt Romney was essentially staying uh, true to his core beliefs. Simon. Well, there's a lot there, John. Let me I just know, do it quickly. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me do it. I'll do it. I'll do it really quickly. First of all, you know, if you are evaluating whether Barack Obama is succeeding at winning over those voters, he clearly is. I mean, he's winning in Pennsylvania, he's winning in Ohio, he's winning in Michigan, he's winning out, he's winning throughout the industrial heartland in which he was describing in this election against Mitt Romney. That's just polling data, right? That's objective fact. The second thing is, I think there's a huge difference between what they said because Mitt Romney's essential assertion that 47 percent of the country doesn't pay income taxes and they all vote Democrat is just factually wrong, right? I mean, there is a possibility that a majority of that 47 percent actually vote regularly Republican. And what I just don't understand, and this is the thing, he's an MBA, he's been a turnaround guy, he's running as a competent you know, leader, you know, he's got two degrees from Harvard. How does he get this level of math wrong? 61 percent of that 47 percent pay a higher tax rate than he did than he did in 2011 right so this notion that they don't pay tax they're shiftless and lazy and that they're even democrats right none of that was right yeah. and right. i think that's what's scaring a lot of people well, let's today. give let's give kate uh, a chance to respond sure. playing right into that class warfare rhetoric uh, simon with that they're lazy mitt romney never said any such thing and in fact those comments by obama actually alienated a lot of folks in the middle class in that that area that income bracket of about 35,000 to 70,000 was the one income area that he actually lost. And so since then, he has been focusing on sort of pitting that group of Americans against those who have succeeded instead of encouraging them to seek that success, which is exactly what Mitt Romney was talking All about. Right. He wasn't criticizing them. He was saying that the Americans went to everybody. We have to leave the discussion there. Thank Thanks, you very much. We'll have you both back again, Simon Rosenberg Thanks and so Kate Obenshane. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Well, anti-American protests spreading like wildfire.